This morning I'm going to give an overview of a program that's called Basic Therapy. I call it Event Evaluation Training. Dr. Albert Ellis, some 60 years ago, started a program that he called Rational Emotive Behavior Therapy. Uh, what I have done is simply changed some words here and there. The idea is basically the same, but I have changed some of the terminology and I will get into that as we go along. I refer to this program, and this is what I've been doing at Wayside and for several years in correctional institutions and places like that. I refer to it as event evaluation training. And what I mean by event is simply whatever you're dealing with at any particular time, not some major thing or um, the Kentucky Derby or Thanksgiving or Christmas, but simply whatever you, is going on in your life at any particular time. That's how I define event. By the word evaluation, all we do all of our lives is we evaluate events. We figure out what's going on, we assign a uh, level of importance to that, and we do something with it or we don't do anything with it. Training simply means that people can learn ways of improving their ability to accurately and, and rationally evaluate events. The central theme um, and the challenge of event evaluation training is change the way you think. If I had uh, a dollar for each time I've ever said that, I would be pretty rich. Change the way you think. And not only that, but change the way you think about thinking, about the thinking process. So that's the beginning of the program. The second word I use is purpose. Why do we do this? The purpose of the participant in uh, the EET program is obviously to learn to think more rationally, more logically, and to live more ethically, uh, intentionally, and meaningfully. Now those sound like kind of flowery terms, but once we get into those, those words will take on a deeper meaning. So the ultimate objective then is to become a better person in the broadest sense of the word. To, and the word I use a lot, is flourish. There's nowhere in the Bible or nowhere much of anywhere else that tells us to be happy because that's a very hard word to define and the word happy really is a byproduct of something else anyway. So I use the word flourish to uh, get along day by day uh, reasonably well by making more rational choices, uh, good decisions, uh, less destructive behavior. Another way to state it is this, learn to create consequences that you can live with. My next word is premise. Uh, and the basic premise for everything that I talk about one way or another revolves around this term. When thinking changes, emotions and actions change accordingly. I call that the TEA formula, thinking, emotion, and action. In other words, when thinking, your belief becomes more logical, more rational, makes more sense, you can prove it, you can verify it, you can stand by it, then your emotion and consequently your behavior doesn't doesn't go away, but it becomes more appropriate. You don't get rid of emotion, you just deal with it in a different kind of way. Now this basic idea of rational emotive therapy can be stated in various ways, and I'm going to mention four of those ways. When Albert Ellis started this program many years ago, he was a practicing uh, psychoanalyst, went through the traditional training that psychoanalysts go through, he was seeing people day after day, month after month, year after year, and he came to believe he was just going in circles. He wondered if he was helping anybody. And he enjoyed reading philosophy, although he wasn't a philosopher. But he was reading a book by a philosopher uh, 2,000 years ago, a Stoic philosopher named Epictetus. 
And there's one sentence in a chapter he was reading that just kind of jumped out at him. And that sentence was this, people are not bothered by things that happen, but by the views they take of them. And that changed his entire uh, way of dealing with people. It, it, he restructured his entire way of thinking about psychology, about thinking uh, about how to help people. It made all the difference in the world. And he started this program then called Rational Behavior Therapy, then he called it Rational Emotive Therapy, then he finally combined the terms and called it Rational Behavior Emotive Therapy. And then I changed it, I tweaked it, I called it Event Evaluation Training. But that's how it all started. People are not bothered by things that happen, by the events, but by the way they think about them. Another, another uh, important idea comes from the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, which says, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Uh, be not formed. The Greek word for formed there is molded. Don't get too caught up in what's going on around you. We do, but don't go too far with it. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. And the word there is metamorpho. It's where we get the word metamorphosis. Uh, we're completely changed. We go from a caterpillar to a butterfly. Uh, we have an old house and we decide what to do with it. Are we going to leave it alone? Are we going to remodel it? Or are we going to tear it down and build a brand new one? Well, this, this idea from the New Testament would say you don't get too far trying to remodel it. You have to tear it down and you build a whole new house. And what this program does is helps give you the tools to rebuild that house. Uh, another verse from Paul is from uh, 2 Timothy 1.7, which says, God did not give us a spirit of timidity, or fear is another way to say that, uh, but a spirit of power and love and self-control. That's another idea that's extremely important in here. And then the, uh, the fourth one that I want to mention is from St. Augustine. And what he said was, emotions require the consent of the mind and the will. So I think by now you see where I'm going with this. Everything revolves around thinking, around the thinking process. Then there are some basic principles. Um, one Principle number one is, and that's from a logical, uh, philosophical perspective. All the problems people have ever had, or now might be having now, or ever will have, are due to fallacies in thinking. Uh, fallacies are thoughts, beliefs that may seem accurate on the surface, may seem accurate to start with, but upon examination and close examination, in fact, they commit some logical error. And somewhere in the program, we deal with those. Uh, I actually have a list of basic fallacies, something you would study in a logic course if you took a basic logic course in college. We learn to deal with fallacies, how to recognize fallacies in our own thinking, fallacies uh, in other people's thinking. We read it in the newspaper. We read it everywhere. We learn to pick out the fallacies and go with that. The second one is, the second principle is that as long as people have an excuse for their behavior, for their inappropriate behavior, they will never get beyond that problem. Uh, the third one is that uh, event evaluation training does not uh, permit excuses for irrational thinking, uh, inappropriate behavior, but rather requires a very high level of personal responsibility. Then the, uh, the next thing on the list is process. And if you'll notice, I'm using words, I like alliteration and, and I like words that look alike and sound alike for the simple reason that they're easy to remember. So I have program, purpose, premise, principles, and now I'm gonna talk about the process. How do we do this? If we need to change our thinking, and if we change, need to change the way we think about thinking, how do we do it? We have to have a track to run on. 
One, Albert Ellis talks about ABC, uh, activity, belief, and consequent. I take the same idea, but I change the words. I call it E1, E2, and E3. I call it event, evaluation, and emotion. And I've already talked about event. Whatever hap happened, is happening, something you're thinking about, or something that you imagine may happen, that's event. Whatever's going on in your mind. Evaluation or belief. When you think about something, something happens, you have to do something with it. You evaluate it. It may be a little thing. It doesn't require much evaluation. Most things are habit. Um, but you have to think about it one way or the other. You have to do something with it. We evaluate it. And I emphasize the word value. We put a value on whatever's going on. And then the third thing is emotion. What Ellis calls consequent, he means emotion. So I just simply call it emotion. Event, evaluation, and emotion. Emotion reflects the importance of the value that you're putting on the event. Now, all of this becomes spread out and a lot clearer once we go through various stages of the groups that, that I do. Now, the key to this process is, and this is very important, is that A does not cause C. Activity for Ellis does not cause consequent. The way I state it is, event does not cause emotion. Whatever happens does not cause one to be happy, sad, glad, whatever. It does not cause the emotion. B, belief, or what I call evaluation, does cause it. It's all in how we evaluate the event. Um, and it takes a while for that to kind of uh, be absorbed sometimes, but once it does, that becomes very helpful to the, uh, to the clients. So the key to the process is that an event activity does not, in fact, cannot create or cause emotion or consequent. Evaluation, belief, whatever you believe about the event, that does create the emotion. Now, in other words, things do not happen or cause one's emotion. And then the bottom line here is that the focus is on thinking, not on trying to change your emotion. Uh, you don't change your emotion until you change your thinking. Once you change your thinking, your emotion has to change. Uh, emotions and behavior are important, of course, but uh, that's not the place to start. One cannot manage anger uh, or modify behavior without first modifying your thinking. Another way to think about the emotional thing is this. Uh, comparisons are sometimes good, sometimes they get confusing, but think of emotion as pain. Sometimes a baby will be born with no feeling. It takes a while for the parents or the doctor to figure that out. But it's a very important thing to happen. It's very sad. A lot of times people that have no pain, feel no pain, don't live long. It's rare, but it does happen. Um, imagine putting your hand on top of a candle and you can smell your flesh burn but can't feel it. No pain at all. That would be like having no emotion. You have to have emotion. Emotion is what allows you to put a level of importance on a particular event. Without emotion, all events would be on the same level. You would be just as happy with a $10 bill as you would a $1,000 bill. It wouldn't make any difference. Emotion allows you to make a difference in that. And you know, and I know, that you would be happier with a $1,000 bill than you would a $10 bill. Another way to think about it is light. If the light in the room goes off, you don't get up and run around trying to find the light you try to find whatever happened that made the light go off. Did the bulb burn out? Did the um, fuse blow? Did a transformer down the street get hit by lightning? Did somebody forget to pay for the light bill? When you get that straightened out, your light takes care of itself. So you don't try to fix your emotion. You try to fix the thinking that created the emotion. Another simple way to think of it would be this. Think of your 
thinking as your body and your emotion as your shadow. When you move, your shadow moves. If you move fast, your shadow moves fast. If you stop on a dime, your shadow stops on a dime. You don't get the cart before the horse. So you don't act or think off your emotion. You emote off your thinking. Thinking always is primary and comes forth. So with that in mind, we'll leave it at that and we'll pick up on spreading this out and going into some other things in more detail at another time. Thank you.